Hello, and welcome to this edition of Energy Connect discussion with me, Julian Rutka. I'll speak to leading energy experts and executives in the lead up to the World Utilities Congress taking place on the 8th to the 10th of May at ADNIC in Abu Dhabi in the UAE. I'm delighted to have Linda Mabhena Oladonju, CEO of DLO Energy Resources Group, joining me today. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to be with me. Thank you for having me. Now, we're going to talk about the renewable energy sector in Africa, and obviously the World Utilities Congress that is coming up in May. To help kick things off, could you tell me a bit more about DLO Energy Resources Group and what kind of renewable energy projects you have in South Africa? Well, DLO is a 100% Black African female-owned energy uh, developer and EPC. So uh, we were fundamental and crucial to the development of one of South Africa's largest wind farms, a 244 megawatt facility that is operating under the Renewable Energy IPP program here in South Africa. We then extended our wings and developed projects in other parts of um, the continent. We're currently looking at projects in Nigeria. We had put in bids successfully in Botswana, but those um, never reached a uh, financial uh, close. From a technology perspective, we focused on clean energy, so wind, solar, um, and there hasn't yet been a gas to power program in South Africa, but should it arise, it's something that we would consider as well. On the EPC and ONM side, we acquired what was one of Africa's largest um, EPC contractors, Conco, uh, but we acquired a subsidiary, their secondary plant um, portion, which was Conco Energy Solutions, and they are responsible for protection and automation and grid connection, as well as turnkey EPC for medium-sized uh, projects with a pipeline of over two gigawatts built under that company of power projects, predominantly in Southern Africa and East Africa. Interesting, Linda, that's really interesting. And um, I wanted to get your viewpoint of, you know, how important can the renewable energy, clean energy be to help position Africa in this energy transition? Renewable energy um, is a very important source of energy. Currently in my country, it makes up, it accounts for less than 10% of our energy mix, right? So we haven't yet actualized the full potential of renewable energy, and that's been due to a factor, uh, a number of factors, including funding, um, government guarantees, infrastructure, etc. cetera. Um, I think that Africa has to utilize the energy mix that it has effectively. And you find that some parts of the continent are rich in natural resources or hydrocarbon resources such as gas. And I've always said um, a combination between gas and renewables will account for you know, what base load uh, is required by a country to the extent that gas is available. So I, I find that people often have a tug of war between the, you know, the, the, the war of the technologies. And I, and I think Africa generally suffers from an energy poverty and we need all the power that we can get on. And if we can get it at um, get it from clean energy sources, it's better for the environment and it's better for our people as well. Absolutely. And I, I wonder that you've touched on something there. You know, what do you feel policymakers can or should do to unlock the development of Africa's renewable energy sector? Well, I think there needs to be political will to actually change over to clean energy technologies, right? But more than just the clean energy technologies, there needs to be a will to decentralize the generation of power. Traditionally, African governments have held on to um, the, the state-owned utilities generating power, being the sole generator. And unfortunately, those uh, state-owned utilities have been mismanaged over uh, decades and no, are no longer able to provide that service. That being said, they still have an important and crucial role to play. But I think that it is important not to see private IPPs as adversaries of the public utility. I think, again, the two can work hand in hand in a, in a complementary manner, provided that clear guidelines are given. Where there is a challenge in Africa as well is understanding that investors come to invest their money and they expect a return, right? So there has to be a program that is conducive for the amount of investment being made. 
And that program needs to be supported, meaning people need to be secured that if there should be any political change or risk, they're not going to be impacted economically. And what we have seen across the continent is that there's been a reluctance for governments to stand behind these um, power programs, with the exception of a few countries such as South Africa. Now, when you are doing um, or building power generation plants in a piecemeal manner, you're not going to have the impact that is desired, which is large amounts of megawatts hitting your national grid, right? So I think it's very important that there's a cohesion between the private sector and uh, the public sector to work together, as well as the lenders, to make sure that the governments are providing the investors with bankable PPAs that are supported by the necessary financial backings, guarantees, and requirements from the state. Absolutely, and I think this sort of touches on one of the, uh, another question I have about you know a major challenge that you face, um, you know, financing domestic renewable energy projects. Um, and I think you've touched on a few of the points there that you think needs to be done. Mm. See, South Africa has become what I call a, a mature renewable energy market. And as you mature in your in renewable energy market, your, your pricing becomes very competitive, which is good for the consumer, good for the country. But it becomes challenging for those raising money from uh, lenders who expect a certain uh, return on investment, right? So you're finding that uh, the rates, especially if you're talking about creating African developers, right? Because currently we've seen a dominance by foreign companies in South Africa who are able to get their money cheaply and are able to participate widely. So for the local developers, we still go to what I call our DFIs, our development finance institutions. And they tend to lend their money from other sources and that money is marked up. So you're not able to come in competitively with your funding and that has an impact on the tariff. So you're finding that a lot more African owned companies like DLO are struggling to participate sometimes in these programs because of the cost of funding. A second layer to that, especially if we're going to talk about a just energy transition, a just energy transition is not only about the environment, it's about making sure that the people um, in those countries are benefiting from this energy transition, right? And one of the key challenges in building up local developers is that there isn't funding for early stage development, right? And we need to address this because this is going to be a huge issue throughout the continent. So you find local players unable to secure land, unable to do the initial environmental impact assessments and you know, get the project to a state where it can be bid. And, and therefore what that does, it then precludes local players from completely running these programs themselves. Interesting, Linda, yeah. And I think, yeah, some points that really need to be addressed. Um, I wanted to talk specifically about, you know, you mentioned some of the technologies that you're involved in, but um, so wind power. How important is it to help push Africa's sustainable future? Wind is an important resource. Um, and it's a, I mean, you're going, to, you're going to cover a wide amount of scale in terms of capacity, should you have wind, right? But the key challenge um, with, with wind is resource availability. So there's certain parts of a country, even in Africa, that has the, that wind resource, right? And also it's about, you know, it's, from a logistical perspective, it's very difficult sometimes to transport. I know in our wind farm, it was a challenge to transport those materials um, to remote areas, which is why local manufacturing or continental manufacturing becomes very important, right? Um, what was interesting to observe in South Africa in Reap Round 6, there were no wind farm uh, projects awarded. And also another key consideration is how strong the grid is, right? Grid connection. So whilst renewables are important, such as wind and solar, you must understand they're intermittent. And most of our grid infrastructure in Africa was not designed or upgraded to accommodate um, renewable energy power projects. So there's a lot of investment that also needs to be done on the transmission side. Um, but definitely wind has a crucial role to play 
in, in, in the economy. And I see an opportunity for it to create more local industries and value chains should the manufacturing and production be happening on the continent. Well, interesting to hear and look out for that space then um, on, on the wind side. Um, now, um, we've got um, the World Utility Congress um, taking place in May. Um, what are you particularly looking forward to um, at the event uh, and um, how do you see it playing uh, a role in shaping the future of the global power sector? I think meetings like this are super important because you're putting into one room the key decision makers. One, we are getting to learn that the industry is evolving at such a rapid rate that, you know, no amount of reading up, you know, the nuances that you won't pick up uh, just from an article. It's always interesting to observe what your competitors, your colleagues in the sector are doing. Even, as I say, South Africa is an advanced market. Uh, there are more advanced markets than us, for example, the UAE. And it's very interesting to be able to observe what we can learn, what we can do, and also to share, um, you know, with our fellow um, attendees what we have gotten right in South Africa and how far we have we have come. But I'm also looking forward to business opportunities because the con, you know, the, the Congress is going to bring together not only stakeholders from the UAE, but I've seen that there's a there's a large participation from the African continent, which is where we operate. So I really am looking forward to those business development opportunities as well. Well, thanks, Linda. I look forward to seeing you at, at the Congress in May. Um, I just want to say thanks a lot for joining me, sharing your insights and views into this very interesting topic. Um, and all the best. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks everyone for watching and just a reminder that the World Utility Congress will be taking place from the 8th to the 10th of May at ADNEC in Abu Dhabi in the UAE. Thanks for watching.